sometimes I have to hold a little bit wider, sometimes I change, not often, but a few times I change, because it's not always this distance. If somebody breaks through, I can use this, right? And I always like to, like to compare it to other arts, or other people who use uh, weapons. For example, uh, in uh, historical European martial arts, they had a quarter stuff, or the name half stuff, or in German, halbe Stange. And the quarter stuff was around nine or eight feet. So more or less the same thing. Uh, with eight feet, I also could lift. It doesn't have to be nine. But if you know how to handle this, it's in which case uh, an advantage if you have nine feet. But it depends on your length and power. So, however, um, and for the English master at arms, George Silver, it was the best weapon. I mean, the stuff. Um, and this he wrote in his book in um, 1598. And also, around 100 years later, 1711, Zachary Wilde wrote the same thing about the quarter stuff. Better than the longer, the real long stuff, or better than pole weapons, better than sword. And there's also an interesting story in the 17th, uh, 17th century. An uh, Englishman was captured by, by the Spanish. And, and there he fought uh, with the quarterstaff. He fought against three Spaniards who were armed with the rapier. And the result was that one of those three guys was, uh, was dead and the two others were heavily injured. So it's it's a, it's a really good weapon. And sometimes people say those the double knives, the Bachan Dao, are better than the long I mean you know, come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> so and also sometimes people say um, it is like a spear. You know, like a weapon. I mean, you put some metal there and, and then it's a spear. But if you put to this pole some metal, it will make it much more heavy. I mean, it's 274, even 500 grams at the tip. You will feel the, the difference. Yeah. So, that's, and the most spears, by the way, are for thrusting, they're not for, for hitting. And if you hit, you won't hit with the spear, it has to be shorter. You have to make it shorter and then there's the advantage of the, of the long pole, the quarter stuff. So, they have something, all the pole weapons have something in common, and that's the pole. But the glaive is different than a halberd, that is different than a pike. And of course, I mean, some movements are the same. They have to be the same if you, if you use a thrust, or if you hit, I mean, there's not much difference, but it is different if you have a blade here. And back to the to the Lointin uh, branch of the Yigma long 26 movements, and I don't know where the cheap one is coming from, the sticky, sticky pole exercise. The Long Ting has it and other, others also, they talk about Qigong. And I did it, but, you know, since I know the, the Tai form and application, it's a joke moment. this. So if you hit a one, you are far out of the, of, of the line. I mean, if there's my partner or my opponent, and I would do the Qigong exercise, it would be like this, which will never be in reality. So if somebody uh, strikes or somebody uh, thrusts his pole on the line, I go there and it's not like 
like this. You know, I try to attack this part of the opponent's uh, pole and not the front part. Front part is easy. If somebody does this, I can attack very easy. So for me, Chi is not 